Because we okay, have uh, stock market yeah. mentoring with Michelle. What number is this? Number nine, number 10? Number. We can call it, we can call it nine because we get back on track and then we can do 12. 12 is supposed to finish the session to do 12, but sometimes, you know, you can do more, you can do less, you can do more, but. I think this is session eight. Okay, session eight. Yeah. We'll take it back one. Yeah, eight. So I feel like you're getting a benefit from the sessions. I feel like um, you're, you have the stock, you have maybe the stock selection. We're doing, um, you know, a little bit of uh, stock analysis where you're building your account, right? Mm-hmm. You haven't yeah. done much trading, but that's okay. You don't got to do trading right away. You can do trading, you know, when you feel like um, you want to go to that level if you ever want to do that. You can, the thing swings up, like the stock swings up five points, 10 points, whatever. You can sell it and just put the cash there in your account. Just stay there for a second, see what happens. That's really mm -hmm. what trading is. Okay. Shell well, session eight. Go ahead. Well, I think that I, I, I think that we, I've been basically doing a little bit of that. You know, looking at it from like, um, like the other day I said, well, let me buy some more Apple because the Apple stock is always doing, you know, pretty good. good. So. Yeah. If you, if you look at Apple, you can see when it dips, it generally comes back up nicely. Yeah. yeah and that, that means that the investors came in, they bought the dip and now it's coming back up. Yeah, and that's like a so it's like a cycle. It happens every week, every month. But if you're watching it, you'll notice that the stock price will maintain a good stock. The price will maintain and it will go up higher. Mm -hmm. I really regretted that I didn't buy um, more of Apple initially because when I bought my first um, few um, shares, I it was only one hundred and sixteen dollars. Now it's one hundred and thirty something. 140. <laughs> um, it'll go back up to 150, 175, 200, and then it'll end up splitting again, you know, splitting back down again. More shares, it goes back up again. Um, before this split, Apple had a four for one split. So technically, the price, if it's 130, the price was uh, five, uh, 550. So it just keeps going mm. up because it, it, it's it, 130, it went, it 136. Went, it went by 50? Wow. Well, you do, you multiply it by four because, uh -huh. because the stock split four, four ways. It was, a, it was like um, four, it was like 440 and it was split down to 110, right? And you got four shares for every one share. That's a split, four for one. You hear me? And that just happened like three months ago. So okay. four months ago. So uh, if you reverse the split back to where it was, it would be one thirty six times five um, times four is one is one uh, is like four four hundred and then let's say let's say it's one forty four times four is one sixty. So five sixty would be five sixty the price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it just yeah. kind of. A good stocks kind of maintain and they go up. That's the important thing. And if we are investing in these stocks, then we'll get the benefit, right? Right, right. Okay, so uh, we talked about stock selection. Um, we have 10 criteria. We talked about mm -hmm. um, you know, dividends. Uh, we talked about cover call. We talked about um, shares. We mentioned, we talked about trading a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what, what are the questions that you have um, now for me? You see, that's questions. What I was supposed to be doing this today. I was supposed to be going over all my notes and writing down any questions that I might have. And I didn't do that because I had something running around to do. So I don't think I have any questions at this moment. What I need to do, I need to go. It's okay. On. We're getting back into the swing. We took a little break, so we're coming back in. So it's okay. Uh, let me review. Okay. So stock selection, right? So volume has to have volume. Am I coming? Am I coming through to you? 
one million, two million yeah, a day. Yeah, it, it, uh, it going up. It just cut off on volume. Volume is a one million, two million a day uh, traded per day. You can see that on like this stock app I have. You press the app, you go to volume. It's there every day, daily volume. One million, two million a day. Mm -hmm. a day. It's important because that means more investors are in the stock, and they'll save your they'll save your ass when the stock dumps. They'll buy it. Oh, okay. And that way, the stock oh, will come yeah. back up and maintain. If mm -hmm. you have a small stock, no volume, and the stock dumps, it's just going to stay down there because no one's going to know about it. None of the people are in it. Okay, okay so okay. then you have a 10-year so chart. So, go ahead, go ahead. So, so being, um, being cognizant of the volume for each stock that you have is very important. And yes. it's, also, it's also important when you're looking to buy some stock. Yes. Look at the price. Yes, now, um, the exception to volume, you know, I like to have 1 million, 2 million a day or more, you know, five, like Starbucks has like 5 million, you know, uh, Netflix has like 4 million, you know, and that's mm -hmm. a $500 stock. So it's not a small stock either, you know. If you have a lower priced share, if you have a lower share price, then, you know, you should have higher volume, right? And if you have a higher share price, then you have a lower volume. For example, Chipotle, I keep telling you about Chipotle, it's 1,500 now, or it, it just hit 1,500 and went down a little bit. Yeah. The volume on that is only 200,000, 300,000. But because the stock share is 1,500, that's okay. You know, because it's 10 times the price of an average stock. So that two, three million volume, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That two hundred thousand volume is really two or three million volume, because mm. the share price is fifteen hundred instead of one hundred and fifty ten times. Right? Follow me. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, volume. You have ten year chart. Ten year chart is you have a stock going from the bottom left to the top right over ten years, which mm -hmm. means the price either maintained or went up or it went up a lot. Okay. So I'm just yeah. gonna put here volume number one. Two to four million a day, and then two ten-year chart. You know how to pull up the chart? Yeah, I know how to pull it up. So the ten-year chart needs to go, you know, in the upper direction. You know, if it's going yeah. down, I'm gonna send you a picture of IBM. The ten-year chart's going down. You know, IBM's mm -hmm. been having some problems. Um, it's a great stock, good company, uh, pays a nice dividend. But the 10-year chart is going down. It was $200 like 10 years ago. So now it's only about like uh, 150 or whatever it is. So in that way, the stock does not um, meet the criteria of the 10-year chart. But it has volume. It has dividend. You know, so it still meets criteria in other ways. You know, but I wouldn't buy IBM, you know, because I have other stocks that are better for me. You know. mm -hmm. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you some pictures of um, IBM and uh, Philip Morris, and I'm gonna show you the difference between the ten-year chart, the volume, the dividend. Sometimes you know you have problems in the board of directors and the CEO, and that trickles down and shows in the stock price. Mm. So you'll have you'll have issues with internally within the company. And it, all that's going to reflect in the stock price. So when you have a chart that's not right, the volume's not right, the, the dividend's not right, the, the, you know, there's no stock splits, then, then you kind of can draw the conclusion that a stock's having problems, you know. Mm -hmm. And they missed, oh, they missed their earnings. Write this down. Stock misses earnings, which happened with IBM. Now, what this means, it's not, it's just a minor thing. It's just one thing out of like 20 things you gotta look at. But when a mm -hmm. stock misses earnings, all it means is that you have these um, people that do analysis, like me and you, but famous people, big bigger mm -hmm. people with bigger accounts that go on TV and they say, well, they're supposed to, uh, we project that IBM or Netflix or Starbucks or McDonald's will hit X dollars in sales, you know, 5 million, whatever it is. And if they don't hit that, they only fail to get 4 million, then they missed earnings. But if they get 5 million or 6 million, then they made earnings. If they get 7 million, then they crushed earnings and it's great, you know. 
we always want to, we always want the stock to up, overperform, outperform, make earnings, and even crush earnings, and that's a good sign. It doesn't always happen, but when you have a stock that misses earnings a lot, then you have to think that well, they're not meeting their expectations, so there's problems. So probably stay away from the stock. That's that's just like a hint, you know. So look out for the stock misses earnings or makes earnings. Earnings are every quarter, every quarter, which is three months. Mm -hmm. Three months times four is 12 months. Three months is a quarter and that's every year. And they do earnings every, every quarter, three months. And either they, either they miss earnings, they make earnings or they, well, I do like to say crash earnings. They just do great and they, they pass earnings, you know. Mm -hmm. That's something you can get easily on TV, but you can also look it up like in Yahoo or uh, your broker could tell you the last earnings report. You know, if they made earnings, if they missed it. Have you ever called your TD broker? Call him, have him, have him explain stuff to you because that's their job. And uh, but, but, you can um, learn some stuff. But when I call, a broker will be assigned to me? No, no, when you call, okay. You, cut, you select number three, and that means uh -huh. you want to talk to a human person. Then you select uh -huh. three again. That means you want to you want to make a trade. Act like you want to make a trade because that's the only way you're gonna get a broker. Otherwise, they're gonna give you some kind of uh, phone tree computer program. You want to I talk know. to a real person. So I'm gonna make a trade. I want to talk to a human broker, and just ask them, hey, when was the last dividend? Hey, what did they make, did the company make earnings? Hey, uh, what's the last news article? And they'll read it to you. And that's their mm -hmm. job. And that's why you have to spend time doing that to get comfortable with it, to own all these bells and whistles, all these, these uh, accolades, all these um, things you have at your disposal, you have to use them. And TG is like the best broker for customer service. They have 24 hour brokers to answer mm -hmm. your questions. So call them and ask them some questions. Okay. You know, and they won't know everything. They'll be like, well, I don't know. They'll, they'll tell you sometimes, but at least you're you have a human person they can read you the the wall street article they can pull up your stock and they can say oh, okay so it has a dividend or it doesn't have a dividend they can tell you oh um they have earnings coming to ask ask the question when when mm -hmm. is the next earnings do on my stock. You call it earning report, earnings report, report. Mm -hmm. And the broker will tell you. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't mean you gotta buy the stock or not. It's just one of those things that you have to, you have to use as the information to make your decisions about investing. It's one mm -hmm. of the many, many things. And the broker is there to help you. So call your broker, okay? I want to definitely do it. Okay, three, number three, we can do, um, we can do, uh, the stock have a dividend, dividend, dividend. A good dividend is three to 8% a year. The reason that's good is because if we have a million dollars. Let's go, let's go right in the middle. Uh, let's say eight plus three is 11. 11 divided by two is 5.5, 5.5. You can get 5.5% dividend, which you can get on Philip Morris PM, which you can get on IBM, but I'm gonna put it there here, but I don't want you to buy IBM. I'm just saying they do pay 5.7%. Philip Morris pays 5.7%. So out of a million dollars invested, you're getting 55,000 a year and you can live off that. That's, that's the whole point. You know, you can live off that, you know, just cut your fancy Starbucks coffees, cut some of the, you know, the parties and you can live about yeah. 55,000, you know, and if the money just yeah. drops in your account every quarter where it did pay the dividend. So you'll see that money over time. And that's why you don't have to worry about trading. You don't have to time the market. It doesn't have to be Trump or Biden. It doesn't matter. You get the dividend. That's it. And that's why it's good. Okay. Number four, and you don't have to, um, you know, buy, sell, worry, you know, no stress. The dividend just comes in your account every quarter. You know, and mm -hmm. it ends up being out of a million. Yeah, because I have, five. But I've I've gotten dividends already. 
Good. From, from, if you have a million and 5.5%, then it's going to be 55,000 a year. Apple mm -hmm. doesn't pay enough dividend, but they pay a small dividend, but mm -hmm. they, they're, not, they're not considered a dividend stock because oh. Apple oh. gets most of their money. We get, as investors, we get most of our money by either writing cover calls on, on Apple or by the share price going up. It's called share growth. Apple, Apple, share growth stock. Share growth stock. Cover call stock. Stock. I'm going to put here a tiny dividend. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got volume. We got tenure chart. We got dividend. Now we're going to talk about. Um, now we're going to talk about uh, stock splits. Does a stock do stock splits? You know, go stocksplithistory.com. History. Mm -hmm. The show. Dot com. Ask you invest or put them up. Go ahead. My husband, my husband, my husband, when you get dividend, dividends, should you reinvest them or put them on the side? It depends. If you, you can, uh, what a lot of people do when they get older, they use the dividend to, to live off of it, to buy stuff, food, either supplement their income or live off the income. In that okay. case, you get the cash, you withdraw from your account, you pay taxes as if it's income. But what most people do, younger people, when they're building their account, they just reinvest the dividend. So you end up buying more shares and then you have what's called an exponential effect because now on, on, on the, on, in the first quarter, you have 100 shares, let's say, of Philip Morris or Apple or whatever dividend you got. The, and then second quarter with the dividend, then you have 100.1 or 101 or 102 shares, you see, because yeah. of the dividend. If, the, if Philip Morris is paying a 6% dividend, uh, a year, that's like a 1.5% a quarter. So you're getting like a one share every hundred shares. Mm -hmm. So that's the exponent. Now, now you don't get dividend on a hundred shares. You get dividend on a hundred and one shares, hundred and two shares, hundred and three shares. You see, so that's an exponential return on that. So it's better to reinvest the dividend. But hey, you know, if you're using it, what I do, I I get the dividend. I I do cash on my dividends, and I uh, take the kids to buy ice cream. I'm mm -hmm. showing them that look, we, we're we're getting our our fruits, you mm -hmm. know, where where we can spend it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, if if um, I'm doing a long term growth investment, I reinvest the dividends. Yeah, yeah. Once you get old, you're gonna probably be living off your dividends because you use them to live off of. So that's later on, you know, like when you're in retirement. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in retirement have like millions of dollars in dividend stocks. They just live off the dividend. That's just what they do. Mm. That's 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 the final plan, you know. Uh, and if you don't, if you if you never spend your stocks, or never cash in, and never spend your dividends, you know your kids are gonna be fighting over it. That's all. Mm -hmm. True, true. <laughs> so you can save it and not spend it, but you know eventually, you know, I I still like you to spend it, you know, because that I, way you. I would like to. <laughs> Maybe spend some of the half, spend half. <laughs> Does your husband have any more any more questions for me? Yeah, many more. Yeah, ask your mom how do they feel about RIT? What is it? RIT, R E I T. How do you feel about REITs. the R I T? Okay, so REITs are kind of like um, mutual funds. You know, they're basically for people that don't know what they're doing. You know. If you are gonna let somebody do an investment for you, walk away, you don't wanna look at it, you don't care, you don't wanna be involved with it, you can do REITs, you can do mutual funds. But uh, in general, they're bad because someone else is managing that money and they're taking a large cut for themselves, not telling you how much they're taking, that's why. Oh my so the God. point of my, the point of my train, and they're gonna give you 5%, 10%, whatever they get a year, you know, 15%, but the market's up 25%. So you have to figure, well, hey, you know, we end up from the market like that, you know? And um, they don't do that for free. So they're just basically managing money, doing all these REITs are supposed to be like um, like housing, rentals, getting income from that. But you, that doesn't make um, any sense to, go ahead. It's a real estate investment, right? Yeah. 
the real estate. Yeah, revenue. you're you're they're putting real estate into the stock market, you know, and they're saying that they're giving you a percentage of the real estate gain, but they're really not. I mean, but you don't know how much to take it for themselves. There's no <laughs> transparency, you know. You don't know. Uh, they're giving you basically they're taking your money, they're investing buy, in real estate, buy. and they're probably buying a you know they're probably buying a, a, a big property, a lot of big properties, and they're giving you a small portion of whatever they can afford to give you, and they're taking the rest. And they're putting a big sign on their wall, you know, and they're, and they're doing a lot of advertising, a lot of hiring employees off your money. Off so your the, point of, the point of what I'm doing, I'm teaching you how to pick your own stocks, mm -hmm. how to select your own stocks, how to do your own investments. You're making your own read. You're making your own, our own mutual funds, what we're doing. Right. That's why. Uh, okay. Ultimately, real estate investment, you should just go buy the real estate. That's what you should do. You should get a nice property income property probably and buy it and then you own it and they don't have to pay all these guys to do the reach for you. That's my advice. Okay. I see specific stock training to selection, trading, cover call writing. So you're doing it yourself. No one else is doing it for you. They're not taking the cut. It's going to cut out the middleman. You learn how to do it yourself. You don't need these guys to do your reads for you. Right, right. That's, that's how I, I, I explain it. So that they, like you said, they probably, you, you probably could have been, they're making a lot more money if you're doing it yourself. So a dividend stock is better than a REIT? Yeah, definitely. In general, yes, because in REITs, they're you have a fancy guy with a tie, you know, a very expensive suit that's getting commissions off your money for doing all these real estate investments, and they're only giving you a percentage of what they're making, small percentage. That's why. Okay. Uh, just pick your own stocks. You know, if you have, if you, if you if you, if you can uh, get some companies you like and you can, I'm telling you the criteria right now, I, I told you this, we're reviewing, you know, then you can pick your own stocks. You can, you're basically cutting out the middleman because you know how to do it. But like I said, if you know how to do it. Yeah, get someone to do a mutual fund for you, get someone to do a read for you because uh, uh, they're like a professional and of course they're gonna get their cut. That's what, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go to stocksforhistory.com. And let's just see if your stocks with Apple, Starbucks, Netflix, all these stocks have had great stock splits. They split, they go back up, they split, they go back up, they split, they go back up. And this is exponential return over time. Right, you say this. Shalom, you hear, you hear that? You hear what Eric said? No. He said, when you have um, good stocks like Apple and stuff, they, um, they split and they go, they go up and they split and they come down and they go back up, right back up again. It's always, they always go back up because right. of the, they're good companies. They're companies that, um, when you look at the 10 year chart, it's going up, you know? So that's where you want to put your money and put your, uh, buy your right. stock set there. Okay, okay good. Uh, number five um, is cover calls. Now this is one of the most important things I'm teaching you. Ah. <laughs> you get 100 shares, you write, you sell, you sell, or write one CC for 100 shares, 100 shares per yes. month. And for that, well, okay. what are we doing? We're renting our <laughs> stock out to the public. We're letting somebody buy the option. We, we're creating, we, we buy the 100 shares. We create the option. Somebody can buy the option who wants to buy options. We sell that to the option buyer and we're going to get three to five percent family finish per month. Month. Income return. You do it by pressing sell one call. So apples are 136. You sell, it's already. February, so we go March, so we sell, we sell or write, write. Sell one, sell, sell one call? My, so we put minus one call, Apple, A A P L. for the 140, I'm telling you the right, I'm telling you the right strike, okay? Mm -hmm. I make this look easy, but it's not easy because you need to do the right strike. So 140 is gonna give you about, let's just say 3% return. So out of $100,000, you're getting $3,000 back in your pocket. And you can do this every month. Mm. And that's why it's good. So you're taking the dividend and it's like you're fast tracking it. Now, 
of course, this takes effort. You have to look at the stock. You have to look at the right uh, call, but I'm telling you the right one to do it. Mm -hmm. So it makes the effort, you know, you have it's considered trading, you know, mm -hmm. it takes effort. So it's not easy like a dividend. Dividend, you just go to sleep, you just buy it and go to sleep, you know, mm -hmm. and they pay while you sleep. Whereas the cover calls, you're doing an active trade, you know, and um, or giving up is the stock goes to 150, we're not going to get that gain. We're just going to get the gain up to 140 because we sold to 140. Mm -hmm. So we're giving up what's called an opportunity cost. We exchange an opportunity cost or better yet an opportunity gain above strike price we wrote. We wrote or sold, same thing. So we have Apple 136, we're gonna pay 13,600 about 100 shares. We sell the 140, we're gonna get 3% return. And we're gonna be able to make money from the 136 to 140, but not higher. So Apple goes to 160, for example, but it won't go to 160 in one month. But if it did, the people who have Apple shares who bought the option will get more return. And we're just gonna get our 3,000, that's what we get. Well, we'll get 3,000 plus we'll get uh, 3%. Plus we'll get uh, the four points between 136 and 140 because we sold to 140. So we'll get another $400. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? It makes sense, but I'm not, it's not much. <laughs> really, we like, need you. I want no, you to do no. sketchers. I want you to do sketchers. S-K-X. It's, it's a apparel company. They make shoes. They have a yeah. nice share price of about $37. Those are great shoes too. Which will cost you three thousand seven hundred dollars. You're at one cover call. You're gonna get like four percent return. You do it every month, and that's a small. That's my smallest stock. I would do a cover call is Skechers SKX, perfect S CC stock. SKX. I want you to remember that. Write it down. Let's consider doing that because it's a good company and. Uh, they pay good on the cover call. You can't just do any cover call you want. That's the thing. People try, oh, I, I did cover calls. I didn't make a lot of money. Well, you have to have the right stock. You have to have to a three or 4% return. You don't get it, just don't do it. You have to select a good what? stock that have the better return on the cover calls. I'm telling you what they are. Start, I'm telling you, Apple, Netflix, yeah, what, what was um, the, the, the acronym for Skechers? SKX. Any questions on that? Okay, so we got volume, we got tenure chart, we got dividend, and we got stock split history.com. So we're going to select stocks that have had stock splits to determine future stock splits. You don't know mm -hmm. for sure, but if it's had five stocks with somebody, probably have another one like Nike, Nike, N K E. They are due for a stock split. I'm telling people, you know, you heard it here first. It may not happen in a month or two months, but when it happens, I'm going to say, I told you, because I've already been like in five stocks this for Nike. I had it since 95. Oh, okay, okay. Do four stock split. And if anybody knows any of my stock splits, it creates more, more that It lowers the price, brings in more investors, stock tends to go back up. Mm. And then cover calls, I just explained that. And then number six can be a share price, share price. Buy stock to have a high share price. If it's a dividend stock, stock, let's, let's just say it's $75. If it's a share growth stock, stock, let's just say 100 to 200 per share plus. Now here's the, here's the thing you'll hear in the public. You'll hear this investors talk and people, they'll say, oh no, share price, does, share price doesn't matter. You know, share price is just a, no, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, you wanna buy high share price because that, it shows that the stock has performed that it proven itself by going up. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you're, if you're gonna go buy stocks, you don't wanna buy the garbage stock that are five cents or $5. You wanna buy the high price stock because it's proven that the share is high because it gone up because people are willing to pay that price. 
Mm-hmm. So you want to buy stocks that are $100, $200, you know, Square, SQ is looking good. I think it hit by 220 recently. Uh, NVIDIA, NVDA hit 550. Netflix, FLX. You have some Netflix? Yeah, I have some. You didn't sell it? No, I didn't sell it. Okay, I think it's at, it's about 540. So these are high priced because they've proven themselves because they're going up because they're good stocks. Chipotle CMG, I'm just gonna put 1500 because it was at 1500 a few days ago and went down. Mm-hmm. 1500, you know, no. so you're not, we're remember, not buying garbage. We're buying quality. Remember, remember when I first told you about Chipotle, it was, it was, how much was it? I think it was 800. <laughs> Right, and oh we're talking about moving to a thousand. Yeah, now fifteen hundred. And 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 you said and you said um, that's a new that's like new, right? But um, if I want to buy, it, go right ahead. And yeah. you bought, right? You bought it, and I didn't. <laughs> I've had Chipotle for a long time. Mm. Chipotle, if, if if you go look at if you look, well, you, there's no Chipotle over mm. there. But if you go in the states, you look at Chipotle. They have a nice, easy, simple system. You go online. You order your stuff. People are happy because they can get guacamole. They can get, um, you know, they get uh, chicken, steak, uh, beans. They can make their own. They make their own thing. Mm-hmm. That's why it's better. Like we, like McDonald's, they already have it made for you. You just say, I want this, I want that. But you can tell them, hey, I want more beans. No, I don't want beans. I want more rice. I don't want rice. I want more uh, guacamole, you know. That's why it's better. And, and just the experience. And if you pay attention mm-hmm. with, it, with this pandemic a lot of places closed down and Chipotle never closed down Chipotle always stay open late till 10 o'clock mm. they weren't afraid they weren't afraid of the pandemic and they had they had a uh like it was like a uh an organized system in place that's why it's better and that's why the stock's doing great and it's always been doing great like that mm. and people are and and, and uh and people, at least mm-hmm. over here in the United States, we, we get fat anyway. We eat too much. You can get a big burrito bowl, like this big, like five pounds of food on your Chipotle burrito bowl. So they don't, they don't cut you back on food, you know? So that's what kind of Americans want, just to get mostly their fat and eat a lot of food. So if you want to get, yeah. you know, go to Chipotle, you can get a big burrito. And if you don't want to get a big burrito, you can get a salad, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, share price, we go high because it means it's better. A higher, a higher share price is better. It's just, I'm not lying to you. I wouldn't lie to you. Okay. Um, what else? Can the stock double within two to three years? Mm. That's a question for you. So you just look back on the on the two to three year chart, mm-hmm. and you can see oh the stock is half price two years ago, so it doubled. Yeah. Look three years ago the stock is one third price or half price, so it doubled or tripled, and that's a good indication the stock's doing great, and you can buy it based on that. Okay, so you have a two to, because what because it could probably double again in the next two three or five years. That's why, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think Apple will double again. But I, mm. I guarantee it's going to go up and up. You know, like people can't put down their iPhone. I see people in the restaurants with their iPhone instead of eating, you know. So they have a product, right? And then you look at the volume, you look at the, look at the, the cover calls, you look at all these things and qualify, it starts going up. Okay, mm-hmm. eight. Um, uh, all time high, all time high. Um, on an all-time high means that when the stock stock hits new all-time highs, I'm gonna say two to three. You know, so not just one time. You know, it breaks a high and then it goes to another high in another month. Mm-hmm. And two months later, it goes to another high. That's what I'm talking about. That's mm-hmm. the reason to buy a stock. This is stock selection. Stock selection one to ten now this is like what i call a contrarian move people don't want to buy a stock at all time they go oh you know 
it's too high. You know, I'll wait till it gets to an all-time low. You know, the problem with that is if you have stocks hit an all-time low, that means there's problems going down. So don't do that. It's better to buy a stock that's hitting all-time highs because again, it's the stock's proving itself, the price is going up, it's going up and up and up and up. It'll probably hit a all the theory is that it'll probably hit another all-time high pretty soon. That's the whole point. So be prepared to buy a stock when it hits all-time highs. Mm -hmm. That's number eight. Number nine, we can say um, market cap. Market capitalization. Just look down there at the bottom of the chart where it says market cap. That's the total value of shares outstanding multiplied by share price. That's the market cap. It means how much money's in a stock. Here's, here's what I've decided, you know, at least it works for me. Um, market cap should be 15 to 25 billion. Mm -hmm. Minimum. If you're in the stock like, like Chipotle, it's going to be around 30 billion, so it's smaller. So it's great, perfect. But if you're in a bigger stock like Apple, obviously it's like, you know, into the trillions, and obviously it qualifies. But don't get here's the point of market cap you can buy 15, 20, 30, 100 billion. Like Phil Morris is 100 billion, Starbucks is about 100 billion. Uh, mm -hmm. Netflix is about 250 billion. So those are well-established companies. But don't buy a market cap that's like less than 10 billion. I'm gonna put it right here. Less than 10 billion, no. Because it's not big enough. It hasn't made the test of time. It's too small, you know, like some people wanna buy a, a stock that has a value of a house in Beverly Hills. That's not an investment, you're just, investing in some kind of small, someone's idea. You know, you have to wait for that idea to grow. You have to invest in tried and true. So make sure the minimum market cap is between 15, 15 and 25 billion and ideally more, but don't invest in a market cap under 10 billion. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna be in trouble one of these days. It's gonna, something's gonna happen and it's, the company is too small and it's not, gonna, it's not gonna do well. It's not gonna survive. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where we are. Uh, I don't know what number ten is, but I'm just going to I'm just going to review here. Share price, market cap. I was I was so busy listening that I hardly was writing. Uh, cover cost. Well, I'm going to send you this. I'm going to send you this video, and I want you to review everything. Okay. But good. um, but um, we cover the important ones. Mm -hmm. All-time high, share price, stock splits, dividends, cover calls, um, tenure chart, volume. I can't remember what the last one is. I'm going to send it to you when it comes to me. Okay. You won't, anyways, you won't get a stock that has all 10 criteria, you know. Right, all 10. You'll, right. you'll, get, you'll get like maybe six or five or seven, and that's good, you know. Uh, usually, like if a stock has a dividend, it won't have a cover call return. Or the stock has um, uh, a dividend, it may not have the volume, you know, or if you get a share growth stock. Oh, you know what? Profits. I forgot. I forgot profits. The last one is, is PE. PE. PE, yeah. If a stock has a great, 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 great share price, it may not be making much profit. So PE is profit, profit. Mm -hmm. Does the stock have a PE? So look at the PE, P slash E. Is it positive? Is it positive? Or is it a dash? If it's a dash, there's no PE, there's no money, there's no profit. Mm -hmm. Does it have a dash by the PE? That means no profit. Mm -hmm. Price earnings. Okay. Um, buy a stock to have a PE. A good PE is, for my, for my analysis, is 28 to 100 plus. You'll see a PE in there. So that's the PE of like five to 10. I say that's boring, boring. If it has, you is know. Is it 28 to 28 to 500? To 100. To 100. If it has 15 to 20, that's just average, it's a real average stock. It has a 15 to 20 PE, no big deal. 
But if it has like 28 to 50 to 100, I'm gonna just put plus. Uh -huh. This is a, this is why this is why it's a hot stock. It's favored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's favored in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, investors are willing to take a risk. You know, investors are willing to pay more. Mm -hmm. Willing to pay more. And that's a criteria to buy a stock if it has a PE. If it doesn't have a PE, if it has a dash, it's losing money, you gotta be careful. That's mm -hmm. the stock selection. We're getting back into the, the swing of things. So that's the review. Um, you have some new questions, good. I, I appreciate talking to your husband. I always like new questions. I wanna apologize to him that I have an opinion on stuff. I'm opinionated, you know, you're gonna have, you know, find someone that tells you, oh, reach is the thing, you gotta do reach. You know, okay, well then go ahead and do that. But I'm telling you how to pick your own stocks. You don't gotta yeah. have got some guy to manage your reach. You wanna get an investment in real estate, go buy a property across the street. Maybe you, you can rent it out or something, you know. That's how you do real estate. You don't gotta mix it with the stock market. Exactly, exactly. I agree with you on that. Thank you for the advice on the cleansing. And uh, yeah. I'm gonna, we're gonna keep talking to you about that. I'll get that tea. Okay, and, so uh, when, we, when are we gonna meet again so that I um I can let's leave. do let's do uh, mo Monday let's do Mondays Mondays but I have to can I have to do it a little earlier ne next Monday. Want to do two, you can do it earlier next Monday? Uh, I can't really do before two. What day is good for you for two? Oh. Nine o'clock. Hey Eric. Hey, you have another question for me? Yeah, no, I just say um yeah, I kind of a question. This um. To stay with GameStop and some of these other uh, mm -hmm. other stocks, you just got taken off like through Reddit or um, whatever. What do, you, what do you feel about GameStop? Is that something that's going to be happening more often? Or is that a real yeah. anomaly? Well, you know, it's about control, right? They, they want to control, they want to control it. They don't want, they don't want, um, people, you know, that's a private, it's a private investor it and making money and, and the hedge funds are losing money. So it's, it's not an anomaly, but it's one of those things that they're going to try to control. You know, that's, that's my answer. I don't know if that makes sense to you. They don't want the average person, you know, making those trades, you know, so they're going to, they took it off. I think they took off Robinhood, right? They took it off Reddit. Yeah. There were several, yeah, several, um, platforms they stopped the yeah they're trying, they're trying it's all about control man you know I, I would avoid it because it's risky you know you like GameStop obviously they, they were headed for bankruptcy you know but the moment that you people start shorting it trying to make money then you have people buying it say hey you know and then they went into this big seesaw and then yeah right. a lot of the, right. a lot of the people, uh, people were shorting it were buying it back to to catch they had money. to. They had to because look, that, you know, look, that boosted the, that boosted the prices way up, and that 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 increased awareness of the stock. And now people like you me want to try to invest in it, and that's going to cause the stock to go up higher, you know. Right. And then they're now they're trying to control it, so you tell them to buy it. So yeah, that makes sense to me. You know, I would avoid it because it's risky. You know, I'm I'm teaching, I'm teaching how to select good stocks, not ones that right. this one game stock no PE. You know, so it's really just a gamble. Honestly, from here. Right. So I'm teaching you how to get good stocks. I have a good product. I have a lot of employees working for them. I have a good when market I, cap. I have a good stock share price. I have a good return oh, that, on yeah. dividends. You know, you good chart. Look at the chart going up. GameStop, you know, is chart is not great. You know, I, I would stay away. It, it, it does kind of offend me that they can try to control us so much. It should be a free market. We should be able to do whatever we want, you know, but they start pulling it off the platforms and then it causes people to want it more. So that's why it costs the price to go up more. Hey, how, how can I get some of that GameStop? Man, you guys, you know, it's about who, who you know. Do you want to know a broker that can get into GameStop? Yeah, let me buy some more shares. Hey, give me a million dollars. It doesn't go higher. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yeah. So, even when it, when it reopened again, it just it took off again. It's about control. Yeah, it's about control, man. People want people want what they can't get, right? Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was telling, I was telling you, I forgot the Shanghai, you know? This, mm -hmm. this, 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 they're, they're stopping this now in, in, in the, in the, uh, in the mailing, like, what is that they're buying? Like, we don't want people to get healed. Now they won't need our doctors, you know? Right, right exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep, mm -hmm. and natural, yes. and natural, um, natural remedies, you can't, um, 
You get so, um, they're going up in price. They're telling you don't to don't do them, so they can sell you the medicine. Right? Let's don't, don't stop me on this. We're doing stocks. I hang out. Okay, let's wrap, let's wrap up here. Right, right, right. Okay. Love you guys. <laughs>